students. My name is Scott Fisher, and I am a process junkie. Mm. I'm an artist based in New England, and like a lot of artists, I love to use traditional materials, oil paint, acrylic, watercolor, you name it. But I'm a little different in that I tend to like to paint on unusual surfaces. Like, I can't even remember the last time I painted on canvas. And I suppose what I'm most known for right now is painting on copper, and then actually engraving through the paint down into the copper. So why paint on copper? How'd you come up with this idea? Well, it turns out it's actually nothing new. They were actually painting on copper 200 years ago, and those paintings look brand new today. It turns out copper is actually a very stable surface to do paintings on. The reason for this, I mean, I'm no scientist, but the way it's kind of been explained to me is that copper expands in temperature changes very similar to the way maybe oil paint would, would expand. So therefore you don't get quite the cracking that you would on other substrates. So it's funny because people are like, that's crazy copper. It's not that crazy. It's actually been around for a while. But why do I engrave it? We all come at these things for different reasons and there's different influences that will drive somebody to do something. I'm a customizer by nature. I'm a tinkerer by nature. I customize guitars. I customize parts for cars. And I was doing this stuff with uh, aluminum um, where I was actually uh, brushing the surface and embellishing the surface. And I, I, I loved how it would have almost a 3D holographic effect on a guitar or on a car. So that's hanging out in the back of my head. So often when you come up with something new, something new you're trying to do. It's because uh, there's, a, there's, like a, there's like a perfect storm of things that happen. And the other thing that happened right about this time for me is I saw an exhibition at the Yale Art Museum in Connecticut of Whistler's etching plates. And I have to say, as much as I like the printed uh, version, I like the plates even more. There were these gorgeous pieces of copper with etching in it and you would walk around them and the way the light would catch on the engraving was absolutely intriguing to me. So all of those things came together sort of at once for me with the customizing and you know knowing the history of uh, uh, painting on copper and uh, the Whistler exhibition. And suddenly I said, well, let's just try it. Let's just try painting on copper. I would say that um, oh, an average copper painting probably could take me anywhere from a couple of weeks to five days if it's a smaller piece. Um, prepping the surface, it's actually not really that necessary, believe it or not. It, the paint sticks to it pretty darn well. It's very different than normal surfaces because you're, nothing is going to absorb. It's all going to be on the surface, so you, 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 know, you have to approach it in a different manner, but I'm used to painting on things like plastic and other things, so it's not too crazy a notion uh, for me to figure out how to paint on the copper. Um, so basically, I just usually lightly sand it first. If uh, I know an area might be shiny, then I'll go ahead and polish that area up in the beginning before I really start painting. I transfer my sketch down through various means, one of which would be to uh, the old school uh, transfer technique of printing out um, your drawing on a piece of transparency film and a laser printer and then you put it face down on your image and you can use an iron and you can iron it and it will transfer the drawing down onto the copper so you have something to start working with. Um, other ways of doing it, you can do the same thing with paper and uh, you can have it printed in reverse on paper, lay the paper down and then use a solvent like a lacquer thinner or something like that on the back of it and rub it down as well and transfer it that way. So what tools do I use to make these paintings? Well, for the painting part of it, sometimes I'll start with an acrylic ink. I use FW acrylic ink on them and it sticks unbelievably well to the surface. In fact, usually I have to use nail polish remover if I wanted to get it off, but that's usually for some light wash technique. And then I'll switch over to oil paints and my go-to paint right now is Gamblin Fast Matte oil paint. I like that it it's not real shiny. It also dries pretty darn fast. Um, and then the other paint that I use is enamel. So it's basically what a sign painter would use to paint a car uh, or to paint, you know, pinstripes or a sign or whatever uh, you could think of that you would need sign painting paint for. So the engraving part of it is actually done with 
anything sharp and pointy. It really can be a ton of things. Right here, I've got a dental drill. I'll actually use that sometimes, but this is really unwieldy. It'll just get all over the place, so I gotta be careful with that one. I also have uh, traditional engraving scribes that I can uh, move around, or gravers. Um, but the thing I probably use more than anything else is this right here, and that is the carbide scribe, which is, in a nutshell, a pencil with a metal point on it. Um, so yeah, that's what I use to do the majority of the engraving. I usually know where the engraving is going to be. I do a lot of prep work beforehand. And I will put a light coat of paint down and let that dry. Then I will take the, the pen. Sometimes there'll even be some brush strokes in that paint. And then I'll take the carbide scribe and I'll go in and I'll start engraving down through that paint. And you know, it's funny because a lot of people will ask me, does your hand hurt when you paint all the time and draw all the time? My hand never hurts from drawing and painting. This hurts my hand. It'll cramp up. I gotta stop and I gotta just rub that thing out every once in a while, but the effect is worth it. So, in a nutshell, you know, the reason I do this, other than just I'm insatiably curious about technique and I can't stop exploring myself to my detriment at times, the other thought was is in this day and age with like really nice reproductions of artwork. You can see down to the finest detail on your computer screen. I wanted to make artwork that can truly only be experienced in person. The reality with these copper paintings is that they're like living things because as you move your head around the painting, the light will shift on the engraving. So it's never gonna be the same way twice. And like sculpture in that way, I feel. I wanted to make something that there's only one of. Even a reproduction is not gonna do what the final piece would do. And it creates kind of a unique moment that's kind of still, I don't know, evolving long after I put down the paintbrush. Okay, folks, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, information about painting on copper. And uh, feel free to check me out on my website at scottmfisher.com. You can also follow me on Instagram where I post tons of process video of me working on the copper and working on crazy surfaces. And uh, my Instagram handle is scottmfisher. And with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you very much.